Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, as you're aware, uh, this weekend Bruce Signet Arena uh, resigned as sporting director and head coach of our organization. Uh, last evening we announced a series of changes, um, most notably Clint P.A. Uh, being elevated to interim head coach of the first team. Uh, it's been a difficult few weeks uh, and days for our club, uh, but working with sporting director Kurt Analfo, uh, I'm glad that you know, we're moving forward as a club and really looking forward to these next few weeks as we get ready for uh, MLS, up, uh, MLS Cup playoffs. Th thanks, Brian. Uh, as Brian mentioned, Clint P.A. is now our interim head coach. Clint has 20 years of coaching experience, four most recently as, as the Revs 2 head coach, where he's developed some of the best talent that is um, young talent in the United States. Um, he's thrived in that position. The last six weeks, he was an assistant coach during um, this period of time, and that makes him really a seamless person to, to lead this group moving forward, and the players are really excited to play for him. All right, thank you both. We're now going to get to the media's questions. I see we have a lot of hands raised already. Uh, so to get us started, first we're going to go to Frank DeLapo with the Boston Globe, and then he'll be followed by Dan Roach with WBZ. So, Frank, I'm going to unmute you now. You can go ahead. Great. All right. Uh, Kurt or Brian, uh, for either one of you guys, um, this is a question regarding uh, Richie Williams' status. Uh, will Richie be part of the team's plans going forward? If so, what does he bring to the team? And if not, why not? Sure. Um, Richie Williams is a valuable member of our organization, uh, and he remains with the organization. Um, as everyone can imagine, this has been a really difficult time for Richie these last few days and weeks, uh, and we've offered Richie some time off um, during this during this window. Uh, in terms of his role with the club, um, you know, I don't have anything to share with that today. But you know, we're continuing to have conversations with Richie about his future role with the club. Frank, I believe you had a follow up. Uh, yeah, just. Um um, okay, this goes to Clint. This is a Clint question. Um, has been elevated, uh, as Kurt said, uh, uh, interim head coach. Is Clint being considered as a long-term answer to the head coaching position? I think what, how we would just talk about that right now. Our, our focus is on the short term in the last seven games of the season, making sure that we get better each day uh, and that we compete and um, continue to get points and position ourselves to, to make a nice run in the playoffs and, and hopefully an MLS Cup. Great, so we'll keep going to our next question. We'll go to Dan Roach with WBZ, and he'll be followed by Tom Bogert with The Athletic. Dan? Hey, fellas, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, just a, a, a good afternoon. A, a question for both of you, uh, maybe two questions. One would be, uh, what's this been like in your mind uh, for the players? Uh, how difficult has this been to go through for them, and what's the process been like from that perspective? We have an incredible group of players in this building. We actually have also an incredible uh, group of, of staff. Our players have been resilient. It's been a very, very trying time for everybody. Um, but the strength of, of the strength of our, our um, and the strength of character and just how resilient and how strong our players are, I think, is a really big asset. Um, but it, yeah, it's been a, it's been a difficult time. There's no doubt about it. Next, we'll go to Tom Berger with the Athletic. Oh, sorry, Adam. I think Dan had something else he was... Oh, I apologize for that. No worries, I can see him, though. Let me go back to Dan. Dan, you're unmuted again. I apologize. Uh, no, it's fine, Adam. No problem. I was just going to follow that up with uh, how, what kind of message do you guys both have for the players now uh, the situation is resolved going forward? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll start with just, um, you know, we've had a series of conversations with the players over the last few days. And um, like I said, I think... Kurt and I, we have a great relationship with our guys, and they've been tremendous throughout this time. And I, and I know, you know, they're really excited just to put this behind them and get back to doing what they love. And, you know, we saw them out there today doing that, and we're going to see them this weekend against Colorado. And I think the players are just, you know, ready to, to move forward. And, and like Kurt said, they're, they're an amazing group of guys, and we have full confidence in them. Yeah, I mean, j j yeah. Just just to follow up on that, the, 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 the players are ready. There's... there's um, through this uncertainty and distraction, it's now, all the focus is now on playing the game this weekend, moving forward, and and um, a fresh start. 
our next question, we'll go to Tom Bogert with The Athletic, and he'll be followed by Tara Sullivan with the Boston Globe. Tom, you're on mute now. Thanks, guys. Thanks for taking the time. I know it's kind of a difficult time here. Um, I have two questions. One, uh, specifically, what changed, what led the organization to make the change with, uh, to Clint PA over the last few days after initially saying Richie was going to be the interim head coach for the rest of the season? And secondly, do you guys have any assurances over the long-term futures for yourselves at the club? Yeah, so I just, just Tom, just to clarify something before I think you'll answer that. Um, I, I've never told Kurt that he is the interim sporting director for the rest of the year, and, and Richie was never told he was the interim head coach for the rest of the year. So, you know, both 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 guys were at some point told that they were the interims. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but with that, again, Kurt, if you want to. Tom, can you go ahead and repeat the, that first part of the question? Tom, let me unmute you. Sorry. Yeah, was, uh, what, what changed in, in the uh, announcement on Saturday night that said Richie Williams would continue as interim coach and then um, on to last night that Clint P.A. took over? Yeah, so I've been doing this a long time. Um, I have a lot of experience in Major League Soccer. I have a lot, of, a lot of experience with group dynamics, especially team dynamics. And it became very clear to me the best path to move forward for our group to be successful was to make changes and have a fresh start. And that's what we did. For our next question, we'll go to Tara Sullivan with the Boston Globe, and Tara will be followed by Jeff Carlisle with ESPN. Tara? Thank you. Um, I guess I wanted to ask a little bit of a bigger picture question. Like, as I look at it from the outside, like the head coach resigned, none of us knows the details. The interim coach is replaced, two assistants are fired. We don't really know the whys. We only know the what. And it seemed from what happened yesterday that fa that your players also kind of wanted more wise. Like, I guess I, I just want to put you guys on the spot and say, like, why don't we know more? And why is this, why is there no transparency? And I feel like, are you concerned that that sort of hurts your public perception, especially with your fans? Yeah, Tara, I'm going to, I'm going to take that to assume you're, you're talking about the investigation and, 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 and that piece of this and, Look, I, I empathize with you. Um, I empathize with our fans uh, and with our players uh, about that. Um, you know, the league conducted an investigation. Uh, I have faith in the league. I have faith in their processes. And, and I understand their needs for confidentiality in matters in terms of, you know, protecting subjects, witnesses, reporters, uh, all, those, all those people involved in these investigations. So, you know, in terms of their investigation, I have to refer people to that, to the league. Um, but, you know, I empathize with our fans and with our players and, and with the media about, about that. Thank you. We'll go next to Jeff Carlisle. Jeff? Thank you. Um, just to follow up on that a little bit, um, you know, Kurt, you said that you, you thought hiring Clint was the best path forward. I mean, could you go into more detail about how you arrived at that situation that the best path forward wasn't with Richie continuing to coach the first team? And why were Shari Joseph and Dave Vandenberg let go? Again, um, sometimes when you're in these positions, you need to be very dis um, clear about what you want to do. And sometimes you need to make changes. Um, and with all the experience that I have doing this, it was clear to me that we had to make changes that would allow us to be the most su successful version of ourselves. And that's, that's what I did. Okay, for our next question, uh, let's go to Hayden Bird with Boston.com. He'll be followed by Pablo Amar with The Athletic. Hayden? Hey, um, I guess how would you characterize the current relationship between management and the players at the club, uh, especially after there were conflicting reports yesterday about why the team didn't train? Uh, sure. Um, Look, I, I have a great relationship with the players. I think Kurt has a great relationship with the players. I'll let you speak to that. Um, again, it's been, it's been a very difficult time for all of us, uh, and there was a lot of uncertainty around the club. Um, but I've always tried to maintain a strong relationship, have conversations with the group, with players one-on-one -on -one and with small groups, and there was some of that, of course, yesterday. Um, but I would characterize the relationship between you know, myself and, and the staff we have here with the players as very strong and, and very good. I would just add it's a, it's, a, it's a very healthy relationship where there's communication um, and 
and, and that's, you know, that's, that's how we conduct the way the things that we do. And, and then just on, do you want to touch on training? Because I think um, Hayden asked about training yesterday. Yeah, um, we had, a, yesterday was a, was a very long day for our club, right? So um, we had meetings that lasted for hours that were very productive. And at the end of it all, we just collectively decided mutually that it didn't make sense to go out in the field. And, and, and that's it. That's, that, was the, that was basically what happened. Next, we're going to go to Pablo Mar with The Athletic. He'll be followed by Angel Salcedo with WCBB. Pablo? Uh, guys, thanks for um, answering our questions. I, uh, I'm curious if you guys, uh, two quick questions. One, um, what your impression is of where ownership stands on this, the so sort of temperature in that room with uh, Robert and Jonathan Kraft. And also, um, if the two of you have any sort of clarity on your futures, um, obviously you're, you're staying on the immediate future, but if you've had any conversations about where you guys stand in the long term, thanks. Sure. Um, so I got the second question. I've, I missed the first one again, Pablo, sorry. The uh, just the sort of temperature, you know, amongst ownership, oh. what, you know, what their, your dealings with them have been like during this past month or so. Yeah, look, our, our owners have been fantastic. Um, they're really supportive of myself, of Kurt, of the club, um, like all of us, right? Um, we're all disappointed uh, in terms of what happened over this, this, this past time period. But, you know, they, they view this as a team that's going to challenge for MLS Cup, as all we do. And I think their focus has been, what do we need? How can they support us to get us to, to that place? And, and we feel starting today, we're, we're back at that place. So. Uh, they've really been tremendous uh, supporters for us during this whole time. Um, you know, I've, I've worked for the Crafts for over 20 years. Um, I don't think I've ever had one conversation about sort of my future with them and what that looks like. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I haven't had those conversations now either. Um, but I think if you look at our club holistically um, on the field, I think Kurt and, and some of his staff over these last few years I think it's done as good a job as anyone uh, in terms of player and personnel moves. And if you look at the quality of the players we have now in the club, if you look at the volume of transactions that we've done over the past couple of years, that you know we have some of, if not the highest profile sales, but yet uh, they've been able to continue to put together a great team on the field. So I think the job on the pitch that Kurt uh, and his team have done over these last few years, um, if not the best in MLS, at least among the best of MLS in that. So I think that 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 hopefully speaks for itself for for him and his team, you know. And off the field, it's it's been a great a great time for our club. Um, prior to this, um, you know, my team on the business side, I think is tremendous. My sales and marketing team, uh, I, I wouldn't trade them for anyone in the league. So if you look at our attendance numbers since 2019 and the way the fans have supported this club, uh, and I believe we'll continue to support this club. Uh, I don't think anyone's done a better job than the people that work for me. I'm not putting that on me, but the people that work for me on the business side uh, at growing our club over these last few years. So, you know, I think from that perspective, from a big picture, I, I, I assume they're pretty happy with, with the club and what we've done. And um, I can say that we're off to a great start for 2024 in terms of fans and ticket sales and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think the future is really, really bright for the club. I see quite a few more hands up, so we're certainly going to try to get to as many of you as we can. We'll go next to Angel Salcedo with WCBB, and we'll follow him with Jonathan Siegel at MLS Soccer. And then after Jonathan, we'll go back to Kara Sullivan. Angel, go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, so part of the reports that have been released over the last few days here uh, was that Ricky Williams, the plan was for him to be released at the end of the season or that Bruce Arena would not renew his contract. I wanted to ask about the validity of those reports, if uh, if you could confirm uh, or maybe correct any of that. Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, Angel, those, those are speculation and rumors, and, and we're not commenting on anything that's a speculation or rumor. Next, we'll go to Jonathan Siegel, MLSsoccer.com. Jonathan? Oh, just, uh, I just lost you, Jonathan. I guess your hand went down, but I'll come back to you if you put it back up. We'll go to Tara Sullivan with the Boston Globe. Thanks again. I appreciate it. If I could do a quick follow, I think it was Hayden asked um, why the two assistant coaches were dismissed because I don't know if you're going to tell me coincidentally, but they had both had public support or posted to social media of Bruce. And I'm wondering if that factored in 
And I did want to follow Brian on that. The line you used off the field, it's been a great time for our club prior to this. I would probably punch back a little bit and say that's, it's kind of hard. It feels like you glossed over then prior to this, like where we sort of sit here still not knowing what this all was. So I hope you don't mind that it's two parts. If you can address that, those dismissals, and then just this sense that like we're trying to move forward without really understanding what happened. You want to go on the dismissals? We mutually uh, parted ways with both of those assistant coaches that you spoke about. Um, yeah, and Tara, I, you know, I was trying to res respond to Pablo's questions about ownership and their thoughts on the clubs and, you know, Kurt and I and that. So I wasn't trying to gloss over the last few weeks and say those weren't important what happened. But I just I think in terms of the position of our club and, and where we've been, um, I don't think all of that gets lost because of what's happened in the last few weeks. So uh, I think if you look at the core of our club, I think there's still a lot of strength here. Thank you, uh, John Siegel, we'll go back to you, and then Andy De Andy Deosa, and then we'll wrap up with just a couple of our local writers who have had their hands up for a while. So, uh, Jonathan, we'll go to you, and then Andy. Thanks, guys. Um, Brian, you guys made a pretty significant move back, and I believe it was May 2019, of bringing in Bruce, um, and that was a pretty, uh, I think, paradigm-shifting decision for this club, given some, some challenging times beforehand. What does the future look like in your mind for this team to build off this uh, and not slide back to some some darker times and build off what's been a I think objectively a pretty solid steady four-year climb for the revolution yeah no thanks for the question uh I guess I'll back up a little bit before then and you know I think the club was not in a great spot in terms of where we stood within MLS and with with the fan base not just ours but fans around the league and, you know, my conversations with ownership, you know, we definitely wanted to change that. And so, you know, there's really a decisions, series of decisions of how to move the club forward at that time. Uh, I'm sitting here in our new training center, and, and that represented a significant investment by ownership. And that was just really the beginning of saying, you know, what do we need to be successful to be one of the most successful teams in the league? Uh, and so I think what you saw, you know, the hiring of Bruce was obviously part of that, um, but I wouldn't categorize as that sort of came first. I think what came first was you know, a series of decisions to move us forward. So building the training center, you know, bringing Bruce in, and, and really the amount of spending that the Crafts put into this club uh, over these past few years. So um, there's a pretty strategic point of view of how to, how to move forward and how to move the club forward, and I think we've executed that um, over that, you know, few-year period pretty well. Um, you know, not much has changed in terms of what's looking forward for building the club and, and, and those commitments. Um, you know, Kurt, his team, uh, again, I, I think we have one of the best groups on the technical side in terms of recruitment of players. I think with the transactions we've done and the outbound sales of players, um, we've seen a lot of inbound traffic too. So some players have left, but we've been able to recruit a lot of great new players to come into the club. And we have so much inbound traffic now for, for people that want to be part of this club. Because again, I think Kurt and his team have done a great job at building players, raising their value, helping them move to, to other clubs in Europe or anywhere else around the world. Um, so, yeah, I think the club remains really desirable for players to be at, uh, and we're certainly excited about that. Thank you. We're going to take about four more questions here, and I, we'll go to Andy Deasa at Yahoo, and then we'll go back to Hayden Bird with Boston.com, and then Sam Minton with the Blazing Muskets. Andy, you're up now. Thanks, Adam. Hey, guys. Um, one of the things that's often said about Bruce or applauded about Bruce is being a great players coach. Obviously, we haven't heard from any of the players yet, rightfully so, I believe. But um, what do you guys feel in terms of you guys said it was a mutual decision to not train yesterday? Uh, it kind of feels like maybe they were left in the dark. Obviously, a lot of players still look, care for Bruce and support him. What do you feel about the locker room in terms of how they're feeling in terms of separation and you guys moving forward, like you say, to focus on this weekend? We have an incredible group of players in our locker room, and they are 100% focused on Colorado, which is the number one focus on playing a game this weekend and winning. Um, this has all been a distraction for everybody, and nobody asked for this. Um, and we've pushed through it in a positive way, and our goal is to, to thrive, and, and that's what we're doing, and that's, that's the focus that our staff has, and that's the focus that our players have. and we're. We're getting ready to go to Colorado and to try to get three points. End of story. Great. Next, Hayden Bird, and then Sam Minton, and then we'll wrap up with Tom Quinn. 
Hey, um, okay, so two uh, sort of unrelated questions. The first one just, I guess, why were these coaching changes announced at such uh, seemingly abnormal times for sort of regular club news to be announced? And then the second question, which is kind of unrelated, is just the MLS roster freeze comes up this Friday, that date. Uh, is the club in a position or do they have any plans to add anyone else uh, before the roster freeze? Thank you. Yeah, I think on um, the announcements, um, you know, I think unfortunately for us, we had to be in a little bit of a reactionary mode on, on a number of things here. And, you know, you never want to be in that. But um, ultimately, Bruce led with his resignation. And um, I know we assisted Adam in, in getting that out for him. Um, but, you know, in some ways, frankly, we, we had to be a little reactionary on things. And um, so I understand the confusion or why people don't, um, you know, think that was the right time to put these things out there. But as a club, um, you don't want to be in these situations. But, yeah, we were, we were a little reactionary at that. And then there's a second part. Yeah, Hayden, I'll let me repeat the second part of your question. Go ahead. Uh, it, it was a it, it was about uh, it was about transactions, and 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 we're we're um, we're done at this point. We've we've made the changes that we're going to make to our team. Great. For our last two questions, we're going to go to Sam Minton with the Blazing Musket, and then we'll wrap with Tom Quinn on the WPRO. Sam. Hello, uh, thank you both for taking the time. Just want to ask both of you uh, a question. So starting with Brian, just overall, what is your message to the fan base who they voiced their displeasure overall with how this situation has been handled and the lack of transparency from the club? And Kurt, especially in your role, do you feel that this situation will affect the club's ability to attract players to New England? Yeah, I mean, to the fans, um, you know, we, we, we all empathize with them. Um, you know, I... I I was someone who had season tickets for this club. Um, you know, I try to have as good a relationship I, ha I can have with our fans. Um, but when you're in these very complex matters, when you're dealing with you know, very formal investigations, um, there's times where you, you can't say things, and there's times where you can't share things that maybe you wish you could share with, with your players, with your fan base, with everyone. And that's, that's a really difficult position to be in as someone who really values my relationships with our fans, um, with our players, uh, with my staff. Um, so I'm not looking for sympathy on that by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it's really hard for us too. And, it's, and, and so I understand their frustration and I absolutely empathize with them on that. I, I, listen, we, adversity is an opportunity to, to make the most of the situation. We are making the most of our situation right now. And uh, so to, to answer your question, um, yeah, we will continue to attract great players to this organization um, because we have great owners. Uh, we have an excellent president who sits right next to me. Uh, and we have great people in this building that's gonna con that will continue to thrive. And again, our focus is to get through this, all right, and focus on, you know, no more distractions. We move forward, uh, and it's, it starts with Colorado on Saturday. And for our last question, we'll go to Tom Quinlan with WPR. Thank you, Adam, appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the time, guys. Uh, Brian, just to start with you, you said about 20 minutes ago, uh, quote, as everyone can imagine, this is a difficult time for Richie. What do you mean when you say this is a difficult time for Richie? And, and to Kurt, do you feel when this all passes, you would like to tell your side of the story here? Um, I mean, in terms of Richie, you know, there's just been a lot written about Richie. Um, and, and so, you know, when you're being talked about publicly, um, that's an always a difficult situation. You know, for, for people who are in this building, um, you know, they're in this sport because they love the sport. Um, they love being around the guys. They love coaching. They love the fans. You know, they love doing just what their job is. And, and you know, when, when they have to answer questions or be in the media or being talked about, um, for other reasons, I think that's just always stressful and difficult for, for anyone. And so, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's really what I'm talking about when I say uh, it's been a difficult time for Richie. You know, and, and to, to answer your question, I was asked, you know, I, I, first of all, I didn't ask to be in this position. I was put in this position. Um, and I embrace it. The, the Crafts and Brian have asked me to, to lead this organization through a very, very difficult time. And I have enormous experience. I'm extremely confident. Um, I love the people in this building. I love the owners. Um, I, I, lo I love our staff. And 
my side of the story is to make a, a very difficult situation into a great one. And we have that opportunity. So that's what we're thriving on, is can we, can we through all this noise and the stuff that none of us asked for this, but to drive forward and to make something out of it. And that's the message that we're telling our players. And they are an incredible group of human beings. And I'll just tell you, watch out, because they, they are united, as we are as a staff and an organization and from ownership all the way through. And it's, ti it's time to get out there and play and stop talking about all the baloney. It's, it's, it, it is noise, right? We're gonna focus on winning.